Hello friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And today I'm going to talk a little bit about making cheese and some of the options you can use. And I'll be showing you it as well. Now I know a lot of you already know how to make your basic farm cheese and that is what I'm talking about. I'm not an expert when it comes to making cheese outside of this area, but I have been making cheese like this for a good amount of years off and on and so I've used it for making ricotta cheese for using in my homemade lasagna and things like that and also for making your more firmer cheese like you put in a ball now I've yet to do it in the form of a hard cheese but um, I'm hoping someday to convince Mr. Rain to make me a cheese press so I can do that now moving on to a few things about making cheese from your raw goat's milk, cow's milk, or even store-bought pasteurized milk. Um, to get, to actually end up with a raw cheese involves a different type of process than what we're going to use here. This standard process of making your farm cheese does not leave a raw cheese at the end, but you may start with raw milk. It's still going to be far more healthy than any cheese you can buy in the store. And even some of the store-bought raw cheeses aren't as raw as they claim to be, which would be either they're raw or they're not. So, but for this method, you have to get heat the milk hot enough that it's going to actually kill everything. It's no longer going to be raw. Um, now, if you're looking for a truly raw cheese, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to use, di there's different kinds of enzymes you can use and it's going to be a much slower process. What I recommend is to try making cheese with either your kefir grains, which I've done in the past and it worked really well. It's going to be a far more tangy and tart cheese if you do that. What I did was after 24 hours, I removed the kefir grains and then let the kefir, the milk kefir sit for another two days and it got very thick like yogurt. And then I strained it out like you'll see me do with this cheese later in this video. Another option is to use your homemade yogurt. Let it get good and thick and then strain that out. Again, you're probably going to end up with a much more tart cheese than you may want. Now I'm sure there's other options out there for making a good raw cheese if you're wanting a more mild flavor like your farm cheese is going to make you that's not raw. Um, but I don't know a lot about that. I know some of this involves using rennet. Now I have a few issues with rennet. One being that then you're depending on something that's more store-bought and made by somebody else rather than something that you know for sure is fully natural like a li lime or a lemon. Um, those, I, we can't grow those here, but at least I know what this is. This is an organic lemon and as far as I know, nobody's been in there and ge genetically modified it. Now rennet can be genetically modified. It most typically comes from the lining of a calf's stomach. So if you're a vegetarian, um, that is definitely something you're probably going to want to avoid unless you know it truly comes from a vegetable source, which it can, but it's not, it can be tricky finding one that's labeled as such. And even then, if it comes from a vegetable source, it cannot still be genetically modified. And so, and citric acid is the same issue. Citric acid, you want to make sure if you're going to use citric acid, you find one that is not genetically modified. A lot of people think citric acid just comes from citrus. Well, not always. Sometimes it comes from genetically modified corn, believe it or not. So I, I take issue with a lot of these different things because I don't trust just going to the store and being able to buy this stuff and not knowing what's in it. So for now, I'm sticking with the basic non-raw cheese to get a, a cheese that's actually quite versatile and I can do a lot with it. So that is some of the things I'm going to go over today is the different uses for this type of cheese and it is also the quickest process and very, very easy to make. So let's get started on the actual cheese making. All right, so what I have here is one quart of raw goat's milk, 
Tomorrow we're gonna be picking up some more, so we need to get this used up. So today is a good day to make cheese. Now typically when I make cheese, I'm gonna do a half gallon of milk at a time, or you could even do a whole gallon. But um, all I need to do is use up this one quart. And for the sake of the video, that's really all I need anyway. Now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna set this over on my hot plate, stick my thermometer in there, and turn the heat up. I like I put it on about medium, medium to medium high. And you want to let that get up to at least 180 to 200 degrees, or you can just watch it when it comes to a boil or when it gets a good thick skin on the top, you know it's hot enough. Okay, so while that's heating up, I'm gonna go ahead and squeeze the juice from a lemon. Now, now what you want is one eighth cup, I keep wanting to say a quarter cup. <laughs> of your acid, whether it be vinegar or lime juice or lemon juice per one quart jar. That's why I keep wanting to say quarter cup. Um, so if I was doing a half gallon, I would use a quarter cup. If I was doing a whole gallon, I'd use a half cup. Um, so let's see what we have here. Okay, we're gonna need a little bit more. So I'll need the other half of this. And I really, these little mesh strainers really come in handy. Uh, the set of three, I'll link to them below. Um, ah, so glad I finally got the set because I use the large one for filtering vinegar now. If you watch that one, I think it was the peach vinegar one. And I still hadn't gotten it yet. Now I have it and I'm so glad. Then there's the medium size one that I use for this. And I have that sitting right here because I'll be putting that to use real soon. Okay, so we're about up to an eighth cup. So my milk is ready. Um, I almost messed up there because I was talking to the camera and uh, wasn't paying attention to the milk. It was getting pretty hot. So now what I want to do is I want to take my lemon juice and just pour it in there. I want to stir it in a little bit. It should start curdling up immediately. I can already feel it getting thick. Now, I'm going to just let that sit. for. You want to let it sit for about 15 minutes. Now, while I'm waiting on that to thicken up and to curdle and uh, become very cheese-like, I want to talk a little bit about white vinegar. A lot of people like to use white vinegar in making their homemade cheese. And there's a reason why I'm trying to find other methods for making my cheese with anything but white vinegar. I use white vinegar for cleaning with and nothing more. I do not use it for anything related to food or cooking. I use my homemade vinegar or, um, or lemon juice or lime juice or any other kind of acid if I need something, if I need something acidic. Now, here's the issue with white vinegar. White vinegar is most commonly made with genetically modified corn. So if you're going to the store and you're buying a cheap white vinegar, you can guarantee it's made with genetically modified corn. That is why I only use it for cleaning and I do not use it for consuming. Now the reason I don't use my homemade vinegar for this is because the acidity is not strong enough for it to curdle the milk in such a way to get a good thick cheese. It will curdle the milk, however, and it is great for if you're needing buttermilk in a recipe. So then I do use my homemade vinegar. I have tried making the cheese like this. You end up more with a very, um, you probably could do better for just like making a ricotta cheese using the homemade vinegar. Now you can use a store-bought, a good healthy like Bragg's apple cider vinegar. I would recommend that because that does have a 5% acidity. Um, I don't know what the percentage, um, the acidity percentage of my own vinegar is because I've never measured it. One of these days I will. I'm pretty sure what I'm going to find out is each batch is going to be a little bit different. Thus, I'm going to get different results. So let's kind of take a look and see how this is looking right now. It's not ready yet. It still needs to sit. And really, you should leave it alone. But I kind of want you to see what's going on here. Okay, so I am going to go ahead and set this aside and let it cool for a bit and just sit and let it do its thing and then we'll come back and I'll show you the next step. Well, you're gonna be wondering why I'm wearing different clothes in the middle of this video and that is because this part of the video didn't get recorded yesterday like it was I thought it was doing. Um, 
Sometimes I forget to actually hit the record button. Forgive the disjointedness of this video, but that's okay because there was a few things that I wanted to talk about in the video as I was shooting it yesterday that I left out. So I'll be doing that as I go on to this next step and then we'll move on to the end of the video being the part that I shot yesterday. So this is actually a, a second batch I started from another quart of um, goat's milk, raw goat's milk. And in this one, I use the lime juice. Uh, lime juice has a really, adds a really unique flavor to the cheese, which I think would be really good in Mexican food. So tomorrow I plan on making some uh, burritos and I'm going to be using this cheese in that. So what I've done here is this cloth here is some, even though I do have cheesecloth, I wanted to use this today so I could show you that you don't have to have actual cheesecloth to do this as long as you have some good clean cotton fabric that you can use. This was the fabric I used for years, doing the cheese, straining my grape juice and anything else like that. And uh, it worked great for me. Now having these mesh strainers like this, I, got, I finally got myself a set of three and this is the largest one. And um, so this, and then there's a medium and then the small one are really handy because now I don't have to use clothes pins to hold the fabric in place. I can just set the fabric in the mesh strainer and then let it drain. And now it's already to the point that right here, um, I've just about got enough of the liquid strained out of it like, as, like this, that right here makes a really good ricotta cheese for using in lasagna making um, raviolis or anything else that you're going to use ricotta cheese So in. you can stop at this point depending on how you want your cheese to turn out. I'm thinking about keeping this a little bit softer than you'll see in the rest of this video, but it's all about a matter of what you want. You can even make this a hard cheese by using a cheese press, which I don't have yet. Um, you could, if you're wanting your cheese to be more firm, you're simply going to keep straining it out like this. I'm actually, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and turn this into a soft cheese because part of the video that got left out is what I did with it after I got to that point. So it's not going to be a ricotta cheese today. Now ricotta cheese is actually, it, it means recooked. So typically ricotta cheese is made from the whey and so I've only tried it once so far and I was not successful in getting any actual cheese out of it. Though I may try again with this batch. However, um, for the cost of what ricotta cheese is in the store and knowing the kind of milk it's come from, and this I know is coming from good organic goats, raw goat's milk. I know whose goats they are. Um, I trust what this is and ha and it's so much cheaper even if I make it from use this as the ricotta cheese and instead of making it from the whey and I and even if I just threw the whey out. However, your whey is going to have a lot of other good benefits. Um, but I'll get to those in just a minute. So let me show you the the more the harder you want your cheese, the more firm you want it, the more liquid you're going to want to try to squish out of it. And I find that kind of massaging it like this is really going to make the difference. Now, I'm not trying to get this super firm, and you may be surprised that once you pull the fabric back at how firm it actually is. Um, when I get it to the point where it's like Play-Doh, it, that's a really good... Um, that's a really good consistency to work with. So then what I do is I'm going to take the cheese out of the fabric. Try to scrape as much out. You can use like a, a spatula of some sort, anything to kind of scrape as much out of there as possible. And then I like to wash these out by hand. And then if, if it's sunny, especially, I like to hang it in the sun to fully disinfect it. <clears throat> so I've got my cheese to this point and you can see how it how it is and 
this is where I'm going to want to add my salt. So you don't need a whole lot, maybe about for this much, a quarter to a half teaspoon. And then just kind of knead it in there like you would bread dough. Now keep in mind, this is just from a quart of milk. If you were to use a whole gallon, you're going to end up with four times this much. Now as far as your uses for the whey, they, there are so many. You can use this for um, fermenting with. You can feed this to your dogs. My dogs love this and it's really good for them. You can give it to your chickens, which I haven't done that yet, but I think I might give them a little bit today and see how they like it. Um, you can drink this yourself. You can use it in your homemade smoothies or, or whatever. This is really good, healthy stuff. Or as I said, you can try doing the recook process of making ricotta cheese, which I think I'm going to try with this just to see, you know, try again to see if I can get it to work. But um, you can also use this in homemade breads. It makes your breads just really, really good. Um, you know, pancakes, anything like that. And if all else fails, if you stick it in your refrigerator and forget about it and it starts to spoil and then you're like, oh, dang, like I tend to do, I stick it in my refrigerator and mean to use it and then I forget, this is really good for your fruit trees. So um, I'll pour it onto my apple and my peach trees and whatever fruit trees I have at the time. <clears throat> and uh, it's just a, a really good fertilizer for them. So you think about the price that you're paying to buy this much cheese right here, ricotta cheese in the store is going to cost more and you don't even get the whey. And with this, you're getting a far more healthy cheese. So the next step that I'm going to do then um, is I can either use this cheese as is in whatever I want to do or I can then flavor the cheese. In this picture I'm going to show you next was some cheese I made last week, I think it was, and I divided it into four parts and flavored each part differently. In one it was the turmeric and black pepper. In another I used cumin, chili powder, and cayenne pepper. Uh, another one was the rosemary garlic, and then the last one was the tomato and jalapeno. I used dried tomatoes and dried jalapenos and they were all really really good I was having a hard time deciding my favorite and you can get as creative as you want with your cheese so I'm going to show you the picture of those cheeses I made um, and then I'm going to move on to the next part of the video and show you how I mix the spices and herbs into the cheese Today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make two of the ones I made in there, plus a couple of uh, variances. So I'm going to start with the rosemary garlic. And to be honest, I couldn't decide which one for sure was my favorite out of all that. Um, so we're going to put about a better than a teaspoon of some granulated garlic. Um, the rosemary garlic was excellent, excellent. And so was the turmeric. Uh, I don't know. And the jalapeno tomato is really good. I did like the Mexican flavored one, but um, probably not as much as the rosemary and garlic. So to this one, you see what I'm doing here? I probably put in about a teaspoon of rosemary to this amount. And again, it's going to be totally up to you. And what I do is I just knead the flavors in like I'm going to, like I would bread. And you don't want to wait too long because it's, it's going to be easiest to do this while your cheese is still warm rather than waiting for it to get cold because then it's going to get a little drier. It's going to get set up a little bit more. And then the other thing I wanted to add to this was this lovely blend I got from my friend who's going to be bartering with me for some more here real soon. And this time I'm just going to take the lid off. This is going to be quite spicy. So anyway, I'm just going to knead that in there. Obviously, I'll probably be the only one eating this unless my oldest son comes over because he likes really hot and spicy too. Because that blend, I tell you, it is a spicy one. Okay, so then I'm just going to, you can shape this however you want. I'm sure you could even use like, um, like a cookie cutter or something. I'm just going to make it into a nice little ball. And what I found is once this is 
chilled in the fridge, it actually slices up. As long as you have a good sharp knife, you can actually slice this and make slices out of it, even though it is this, though it's a softer cheese. Now to this one, I'm going to be adding my black pepper and turmeric with another little addition. So, oh, i say about a teaspoon or so of black pepper, lots of black pepper. And we know that black pepper and turmeric are great together because they, the black pepper helps the body assimilate the, uh, um, the turmeric better. So oh, a little bit more than that. Yeah, just good and healthy. And after um, I made that one batch of hamburger mac and cheese, and you can find that video right up here, where I used the combination of turmeric and curry together, I decided I love the flavor blend. So I'm going to try to this one adding some curry. Now this looks like it's going to be pretty strong, but that's okay because I am one that loves lots and lots of flavor. It seems like it takes me about two days to get the yellow out of my fingernails and my, hand, and my skin when working with turmeric. But turmeric is just one of those things. And I put, oh, by the way, I put on my Facebook page the other day, um, a post about my son given he had an ear clearly had an ear infection and had, had it for three days before he came and told me about it and he's 22 right now and so I gave him some turmeric capsules I'd made some moringa capsules I, I had made and some of my homemade antibiotic tincture I made from nasturtium leaves and um, I think the next day he was better and then like he finally told me he goes, oh yeah, my ear infection cleaned right, cleared right up and it's totally gone. So I was like, cool. So there we have it. There's a nice little ball of turmeric curry black pepper cheese. And so I'll be sticking this in my refrigerator and letting it finish setting up. And uh, I got a nice, uh, this is the glass lock or snap lock. I really like this stuff and I'll put a link to these below. Really great for food storage. You can use jars, of course, mason jars. But sometimes there's things where you want something more shallow, and I love these. I had bought two full sets of them. Now the set, the actual set that I bought is a little different than the link I'm going to give you because that set is no longer available. However, it is very similar where it has all the different sizes with the round and the rectangle. So excellent set. All right, and here is the lid. Now the lid is plastic, but typically your food isn't touching it, and it is BPA-free at least. And it just locks into place like that. Really like this. So set. I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, you learned something new. And don't forget to add in the comments what you like to do with your homemade cheese or your home or your leftover way from making whether it be you straining your yogurt or making cheese or whatever it is that you end up with whey. So be looking forward to that. Thanks for watching. Take care and God bless. And then I just strained it out like you'll see me do later in this video. And then I just strained it out like you'll see me do later in this video. The dogs are playing. Oh my gosh, that sounded really bad. <laughs>